Until science stops messing around trying to cure disease and world hunger, we're never going to be able to have pet dinosaurs to take home and snuggle. So, in the meantime, all we can do is search for their bones, imagine what they looked like, and make cheesy action movies about them teaming up to save their human captors for no good reason. But despite the fact that we're discovering new collections of dinosaur remains all the time, there's still a lot we don't know about these ancient beasts who kept the Earth warm for us for hundreds of millions of years. What did they look like? Who was the biggest? And how did dinosaurs make sweet, sweet love? Scientists say they can't tell us, so let's find out why in our list of seven mysteries of the dinosaurs. Number seven, have we found all the dinosaurs? Short answer, no, not by a long stretch. In fact, a new dinosaur was announced as recently as May 19th, 2016. Dr. Jordan Mellon, in conjunction with the Canadian Museum of Nature, unveiled the reconstructed skull of Spiclipius chaporum, a plant-eating horned dinosaur which closely resembles a triceratops. And in March, we also discovered a new species of the tyrannosaur called Timberlangia uotica, which was about the size of a horse, but just as vicious as its cousin the T-Rex. The problem with identifying new species is that dinosaurs weren't very considerate. They didn't leave whole skeletons in a tidy wooden casket for us to dig up. We often only uncover parts of them, and it takes years to identify whether these remains come from known or unknown species. This is exemplified by the mystery regarding the remains of specimen CPC-274 found in Coahuila, northern Mexico, which was found between 2007 and 2011, but which scientists have still yet to formally identify. So if any of you are good at jigsaws, or you've watched every episode of CSI Pangea, why not head down to Mexico, give these fellows a hand? At six, what was the biggest dinosaur? The answer to this question at present is the sauropod Argentiniosaurus huincluensis, which was just shy of 100 tons in weight, 130 feet long, and whose vertebrae were the same size as a whole adult male. But considering how often sauropods evolved to change size and how there are many areas of the Earth we've yet to explore for fossils, it seems unlikely that will be the biggest we ever find. Some evidence points to another species, Amphacilius fragilimus, as being truly the largest known dinosaur. This fella may have been as heavy as 150 tons and 200 feet long. However, after being studied in the 1870s, the only known remains of this creature were lost. Good job, moron. Spend your life scouring the earth for ancient dinosaur bones and then you leave them on a bus or something. But the truth is, even if we still had the Amphacilius remains, it may not be enough to verify the claim. As we've already said, dinosaur remains are more commonly found in form of fragments or individual bones. So whenever someone is trying to identify a new largest dinosaur, they often do so by comparing smaller complete skeletons of the species to unusually large partial ones. But this involves guesswork to fill in the gaps. Because basically it's the same as saying a guy with big feet probably has a big wang. We're making an assumption there, but we need to make sure. And to do that, we need to find more evidence. Oh, and speaking of wangs, Number five, how did dinosaurs get freaky? Having studied the anatomy of various species of Tyrannosaurus in great detail, paleontologists have now concluded that the T-Rex was real bad at foreplay. Those tiny arms, not conducive to getting hot and heavy with yourself, let alone another T-Rex. So how exactly did dinosaurs reproduce? All dinosaurs came from an egg, but that's about as much as we know. Sadly, no dinosaur couples were ever fossilized whilst making love, and with only skeletal remains to go off, we're having a hard time figuring out exactly how it worked. You might think it's as simple as insert Dino D into Dino V, or into the A, if it's the dino's birthday, but scientists can't even agree on what kind of genitals dinosaurs had. Likely, they all possessed a cloaca, which is one single orifice for pee, poo, and eggs, and that the males had a penis similar to modern ducks, who possess super long penises coiled up inside their body. But until the day we find a fossilized dinosaur wang, we're just going to have to use our imagination. Which brings us to our next entry. 4. Were dinosaurs hot? I don't know about you guys, but I've never been able to look at a brontosaurus without salivating. It's those long necks. 
Whew. Can you imagine those barbecued? <laughs> but when we ask if the dinosaurs were hot, what we're actually wondering is whether they were warm or cold-blooded. Scientists have argued for decades over this, because if we can figure it out, we may understand more about how dinosaur life came to exist and eventually die out. If they were warm-blooded, it means dinosaurs would have been active and hunted for food more often, whereas if cold-blooded, they might have lazed in the sun like modern-day lizards. Am I the only one now picturing a T-Rex on its back in the hot sun waiting for belly rubs? Paleontologists have attempted to figure out the answer by studying bone density and growth patterns in dinosaur remains. But, according to a study of dinosaur eggs in the journal Nature Communications, the real answer may neither be warm nor hot, but somewhere in between. At 3. What did dinosaurs look like? Ever since man stumbled upon weird-looking bones from previously unknown animals, we've used our imaginations to figure out what they might have looked like. Ancient Chinese and Greek people made sensible conclusions and came up with lion or dog-like creatures to explain their discovery. Less sensible conclusions were later drawn by 18th century British physician Richard Brooks, who, after finding the end of a broken megalosaurus femur, believed it to be the fossilized remains of a giant's testicles, giving it the official name Scrotum Humanum. That's not even a joke. Dinosaurs as we know them were classified together in 1842 by Richard Owen and identified as fearfully great reptiles. And since then we've depicted dinosaurs as giant versions of modern lizards, but this may not be accurate. Yale University's John Ostrom first put forward the idea that dinosaurs were feathery in the 1960s. And since then, we've discovered he was actually correct. Sinosauropteryx was discovered in China in 1996, and we could see it was covered in feathers like a bird. We then noticed marks on the forearm bones of velociraptors, which indicate the presence of quill knobs, meaning it too looked like a really angry chicken. There's also the possibility that the T-Rex's famously tiny arms were in fact hidden by feathers, and more closely resembled wings. Other open questions include which dinosaurs had fur, did dinosaurs have lips, and what color were they? A team of scientists actually pioneered a technique in 2015 to answer this last question, and managed to discover that the Mosasaurus had a dark back and pale colored belly, and so it won't be long before more dinosaurs are accurately analyzed in this way. Paleontologists are now starting to use 3D modeling to analyze evidence and paint an even truer picture of what the dinosaurs really look like. Which means that in the near future, we're going to have to remake Jurassic Park all over again. In at 2. Why did dinosaurs look so weird? Based on fossilized bones and cartilage, what we do know about dinosaur appearance is that they looked pretty weird. From giant horns and plates to colorful flaps and spines, the dinosaurs enjoyed a far greater diversity than human beings ever will. I wonder if the three-horned guys were ever racist towards the two-horned guys. Initially, it was thought horned and crested dinosaurs behaved like stags and formed these adornments for combat, but a new theory states that most of these colorful additions were a means of helping them identify their own kind. Other paleontologists disagree with both, instead claiming that dinosaurs were more like peacocks, and these garish appearances were used to attract a mate. Can't say it works for me though. I like my dinosaur necks long, bare, and au natural. Number 1. What really killed the dinosaurs? There aren't many who disagree with the conclusion that a huge asteroid impact 66 million years ago in Mexico's Chicxulub region contributed greatly to the demise of Earth's dinosaur population. But was a giant space rock the only suspect involved in the greatest murder mystery of all time? Possibly not. Because again, according to Nature Communications, some species of dinosaurs were already heading for extinction way before the asteroid hit. Small herbivores such as ceratopsids and hadrosaurs were already on the decline for a solid 12 million years before, as climate change and tectonic collisions may have caused significant problems for their food supply. It is also thought likely that something called the Deccan Traps worked alongside the asteroid to hit the dinosaurs with a double whammy of death. The Deccan Traps are one of the largest volcanic areas on the Earth, and it is believed that the gases released during their formation would have greatly contributed to the cretaceous palagene extinction event. Other theories include the regression of sea levels, and the impact of a series of asteroids which fell around the same time as the one which caused the Chicxulub crater. Whatever way you spin it, 
the dinosaurs had a whole lot of things trying to kill them off. Which makes you wonder if that's something humanity will have to deal with in the near future. And if you're curious about how long we've all got left to live, why not take a look at our recent video on the seven forthcoming events in space which will directly affect the Earth. If you're not still imagining how dinosaurs get nasty, of course. <laughs>